Hey there, rock stars, and welcome to this totally awesome and totally indoors episode of Rock Talk. Today, I have a super fun, super easy, and super sweet experiment that you can do in the comfort of your own home. And you may even have all the necessary supplies just lying around. So gather them up, rock stars, because today we're going to be making sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic chocolate rocks. Let's get to it. Okay, so what you're going to need to ha make some chocolate rocks are just a few common household items. First, you're going to need some kind of a um, pancake tin of some sort, or a cupcake tin. I have these totally sweet silicone ones, which are really cool. You can throw them in the oven and do all kinds of stuff with them. But you know, if you just have the paper cupcake tins, those will be just fine. You don't really need these. At the very least, I'd say you're gonna want three, one for your sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rock experiments. However, if you have a couple extras, those will not be uh, missed. So be, be sure to stack those up. We're also going to wanna have two different kinds of chocolate chips. I have a massive bag of straight up just chocolate chips and then a couple bags of white chocolate chips. That Having two different kinds, um, white and black, is really going to help us see the differences in our rocks, but you don't necessarily need to have different kinds. Just one straight kind of regular chocolate will be totally fine if you don't have that. Next, you're going to want to have some ice baths for our experiments. Again, not necessary, but if you are impatient, if you don't want to wait around for things to cool down, you can speed up the process a little bit with some ice. And then lastly, um, a knife in case you want to try and get some sweet chocolate cross sections, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. The first thing we're wanted, gonna do though, is get one of our cupcake tins and prepare a sedimentary chocolate rock. Okay. So first up is our sedimentary rock. We are, for this experiment, treating each individual little chocolate chip like it's its own little rock. So you can imagine that this little chocolate chip is a sand grain or a pebble or some other already existing rock. And so we've got just a bunch of little rocks that we're all just going to collect here in our cupcake tin. I'm gonna make one layer of one one kind of one kind of a uh, of our chocolate sediments and then we're going to make another layer using a different colored sediment all right and these are a little bit smaller let's see if that affects things at all all right and then we're going to make another layer okay nice and top it all off with, I think I'm just gonna do one more layer of white sediments or chocolates. There we go, just gonna move those around there. You can keep adding on to this if you want. You can make it go as, as much, as, as big as you want, really. Your mess, sky's the limit. Imagination is the only thing holding you back here. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it to four. And now we're going to take this Cupcake, be very careful because we don't want to move around our layers all that much. Take it to our microwave. Uh huh. And just put this in the microwave for exactly 30 seconds. This is going to be very important. You do it for just 30 seconds. Now, we want to microwave our sedimentary rocks here for 30 seconds and no longer than that any longer than that and it's going to start to melt too much and however if it isn't and melted enough we're not going to get any kind of melted little edges on our sedimentary rocks all right so we've got fresh out of the microwave we're just going to take another cupcake tin and just apply light pressure on top just enough to get a little bit of a squish in our in our, in our chocolate rocks here, in our chocolate. So you can see some chocolate starting to, starting to come through there. So we just wanna get just, you know, a little squish there. And then we're going to take it, mm, delicious. And we're just gonna take this concoction and put it 
in our ice bath right quick. Let me see. Take this and just put that right in our ice bath right there. And we're just gonna let that cool and see what that looks like. Okay, so while our sedimentary rock is cooling, we're gonna come back and make a metamorphic rock. Now metamorphic rocks form under slightly higher temperatures than our sedimentary rocks. Let's see what that takes. First, we're gonna layer some more, whoops, layer some more rocks in there. Get more structures in there. Again, I'm stopping things off here at four. It seems like a pretty decent amount for uh, for layers, amount of layering here. We should get some nice banding, I'm hoping, once everything cools off, we'll have to see. All right, now we're gonna take this to the microwave and pop this bad Chaco in for 30 more seconds, for one whole minute. Now, metamorphic rocks are a little different from sedimentary rocks in that a little more temperature, a little more pressure is being applied to that rock and the individual grains, whether it's a sand grain or a cobble or a pebble, are going to start to metamorphize. They're going to start to, to change in some way and alter from where they were originally. And so by applying a little more heat to our chocolate, it's going to start to melt a little bit more and hopefully should result in a slightly different looking end result, a slightly different rock. Let's check it out. All right, that's done. So you can take a look. Oh yeah, it's real goopy. You gotta be real careful here. And do watch out, sometimes it can be very hot coming out of the microwave. You're gonna want adult supervision at all times. Okay. The bottom can be quite hot. And so we are going to apply a little bit more pressure on this one. So we're gonna take our, another tin or another little cupcake paper here and apply a little bit more pressure to this rock. And so you can see a lot of the sides are starting to gush up. We've got some liquid chocolate, but not a wholly liquid rock. Oh. Grab the spillage. Mm. Mm. All right. Okay, I'm gonna take this and put this in our ice bath as well. It's just kinda. Carefully float this on our ice bath. There we go. Okay, so now it is time for probably the easiest of all of the three rocks to make it home, the igneous rock. And then take these straight to the microwave. Oh. <clears throat> and this time, you're gonna wanna have it in for two minutes. Two whole minutes. Now, this is going to ensure that you have completely and utterly melted every little piece of rock or chocolate that is in that microwave. So that way, it's gonna be completely liquid, there's no more solid rock bits at all, and it's just completely obliterated. That is an igneous rock. Now, not all igneous rocks form in the same place. However, you have igneous rocks that form on the surface, known as extrusive igneous rocks, and igneous rocks that form underground, known as extrusive igneous rocks. Because we're on the surface and our liquid chocolate is going to cool on the surface, this is going to be an extrusive igneous rock, extrusive chocolate, if you will. If you have an idea of how to make an intrusive igneous rock out of chocolate, because I'm, I don't really, I'm not really sure, wasn't able to figure that out, please post it in the comments. I want to hear that, because that sounds like an awesome, awesome add-on to this experiment. All right, check it out. Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa! Volcanic eruption. Explosions. Woo! Hot. Oh, we did. We did a volcanic eruption. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. Hot, 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 hot. Let's put this on the table. Put this on the table and see what we did. Ugh. Oh, man. 
So in addition to all of the rocks melting, we've also kind of burned a little bit of chocolate there, it looks like. Mm. Mm. Kind of tastes like marshmallows. If you don't like the smell or taste of burnt chocolate, you might want to tone it down. Maybe not do two minutes exactly, maybe a minute, 30 seconds. But this is a really good example of an igneous rock. And you know how? There's only one way to really know for sure, and that's to give it a pour. Oh, 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 there we go. That's how you know you've got an igneous rock when you can pour it like that. Woo. Still sizzling. All right, so you can see here, the igneous part of our rock is completely liquid. Mm. Completely liquidy, ooey, gooey. It's been totally turned into a liquid and is resem doesn't resemble the original rocks or the original chocolate chips that it came from at all. Hallmarks of an igneous rock. Now, get this out of the way. We've had our sedimentary rock has been chilling for quite a while. Let's give this a feel. Oh yes, I believe this is ready and is looking really good, so let's crack this open. All right, here we go, three, two, one. Ta-da! So you can see the bottom kind of got a little bit, a little bit melted, but if we flip it over, look at the top here, this is great. Okay, so we can see here that there's a lot of our chocolate sediments that didn't end up sticking together. So these are just original sediments. These have not formed a rock. But if we look over here, these look exactly like chocolate chips, but if you touch them, they're actually melted together. So this is our chocolate sedimentary rock. And actually, if I hold this up, you can even see some sweet banding a little bit in those sediments, which is super cool, super neat. So, I would like to compare our sedimentary and our igneous rocks. And this is an earlier igneous rock, igneous chocolate rock that I made that didn't burn. And so you can see a little, little better that they've just kind of swirled together. It's just a big swirly mess of white and dark chocolate. And then over here, you can still very much see the original chocolate chips, but these have solidified. These are one piece now instead of being separate individual sediments it's one rock so that's just a quick indicator quick differences between our sedimentary and our igneous rocks super cool all right now i think our metamorphic rock is ready so i'm going to pull this off of our ice bath and you know when it's ready when if you are pressing on it you don't feel any more softness anymore it's completely hard it's solidified now so that means it's ready. All right, first, got to take it off the top part here. Oh, that was, that was actually pretty easy. Looks like this part's still a little gooey. But that's all right. All right, so here we go. I think I've, I, I think I've got it. Just kind of, oh, almost. Careful. Got it. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, there we go. Whew. All right, now check out our metamorphic rock. It doesn't look like much, it's kind of hard to tell that you've got um, some melted parts and some not so melted parts. So I think we've hit a pretty good balance between totally melting our rock and uh, not quite totally melting it and just kind of having still formed uh, chocolate chips. So why don't we cut it in half and get that cross section and I'm hoping we can really get some good detail here. Let's check it out. All right, there we go. We've opened up our metamorphic rock. And if we take a look on the inside here, oh, that is perfect. Look at that. This is absolutely perfect if we take a look at this cross section, because you can still see over here some more or less formed chocolate chips. But then over here, this end, you get a little bit more heat and things start to get a little bit more plastic. Our chocolate rocks or chocolate rock grains are starting to melt and kind of mix into each other, but not totally melting entirely, creating a bit of a swirl, if you will. And that swirl in a lot of metamorphic rocks forms different 
with different gradients in grades depending on how much temperature and how much pressure there was that was applied to this rock. Based off of this, I'd say that we've got ourselves a pretty solid metamorphic schist just based off of our our banding here where we've got some some a white black white black bands a little bit here. But who knows if uh, you think that this looks like a different kind of metamorphic rock. Let me know in the comments. Mm. Now this is a cool, fun, at-home experiment for you to try. And I hope that you do give it a shot. Let me know in the comments what, what comes up for you as you try this experiment. You know, experiment, play around, mess around, have an awesome time with it. And as always, rock stars, stay curious and keep on rocking. Until next time, this has been Michael Stone for an awesome, awesome episode of Rock Talk.